Friday, April 23rd to Monday, April 26th is Ludo Naricon, an online digital indie narrative game festival slash convention. I was super lucky to get access to this convention as like a member of the press. I'm streaming a bunch of different demos from indie narrative games and interviewing developers from these games on my Twitch channel this weekend. So I thought I'd make a fun little vlog as if I'm going to- it's been a while since I've been to a physical convention. I thought this would be fun since we can't really go to conventions right now and I really miss going to conventions with friends. I used to make convention vlogs whenever I would go to them, so consider this an unconventional convention vlog for an online convention where I don't really leave my room. I'll be attending a bunch of online panels with game developers and narrative designers. I'll be checking out like a bunch of different demos from games. Today is day one. It's Friday the 23rd. My day started off by watching the latest episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, actually the season finale. Over the past six weeks, I've been watching the latest episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier as they've released with my buddy Malachi and his partner Rom. We wake up at 7 a.m. and we Disney Plus like party stream. And now I'm gonna do my morning workout routine. My friend Kay over at twitch.tv slash K underscore TV. Her and her Discord community have been doing daily workouts. They've been doing like a Chloe Ting 15 day workout challenge. So I've been participating in that. I believe we're on like day six or day seven. I'll be doing that now to start off my day. Okay, workout, Chloe Ting, core 15 day thing is done. We have a check-in in K server just to be like, hey, I did today's. We're all just kind of holding each other accountable. We're not really working out together, just like checking in. I'm gonna do my check-in and say I did it. Set. As of this clip, Ludo Naricon has officially begun. Panels have started on Steam. The entire event is hosted on Steam, which is really cool. I've never seen something like that before. I've heard reference to conventions like this. There's another one uh, my friend Saz told me about. Hosted within Steam itself, like it's an online open world where you build an avatar and you explore the convention that way, which is super cool. While it has begun, I won't begin my celebrations and checking out of festivities until later on this afternoon, because before then, my friends from theater school have an online performance being streamed on YouTube that I'm gonna go watch. So one of the coolest parts about this whole experience is that I've had to reach out to so many different developers from all over the world in order to arrange these interviews. They provide an entire contact breakdown for all the developers and publishers that have games being showcased this weekend. It has been like, I kind of get why people have whole teams to do this kind of thing. I have been making graphics I have been sending emails, I have been drafting questions, I have been contacting. I've got a bunch of tech rehearsals this weekend as well to make sure all of our cameras and microphones connect. It's a lot for just one person and I feel a little over my head just doing it all by myself. <laughs> with so many developers I'm contacting all at once, but also like, it's been a really fun experience. Like I'm right now finalizing a couple of details with two of uh, our guests this weekend, confirming dates for a tech rehearsal and getting the other guests prepared with interview questions and just any final like notes or needs. One of my favorite parts about going to a convention is that you get to connect and meet new people and like do really cool things. Like I remember when I went to Toronto Comic Con of the last couple of times, we were dressed in cosplay, so we got to interact and meet other people in cosplay and make friends that way. There were artists I could hang out with. When I went to Con Bravo in Hamilton back in 2018, there was like games rooms where we could sit down and just play video games with people we never met before. And I think that's one of the things that I miss most about conventions is just meeting new people and just hanging out and enjoying things that you enjoy alongside others. It's not the same, but meeting these new people and getting to know them and hopefully this weekend having a really good time sitting down and just chatting with them about video games for like half an hour. I'm looking forward to it. The show is over and as expected, they did amazing. It was great. I'm going to be checking out a panel called Diverse Cyberpunk Stories, Humanizing Identities and Finding Alternative Universes. It just sounds really cool. It sounds really cool. 
I kind of want to check it out. I'm a sucker for storytelling regardless of the medium. So yeah, I think it'll be super cool. I'm going to hang out on my Discord server and I'm going to watch the panel and then immediately jump into stream. What's going on everybody? Hello, welcome to the stream. Today we are playing Forgotten Fields from Frostwood Interactive. This was a gifted game they sent to me, so we're gonna try out the whole game. We'll see if we like it, we'll see if we vibe. Folks, let's jump into it. Minkoop, thank you so much for that resubscription. Welcome to the stream, how you doing? I kind of vibe with this outfit, not gonna lie. Hold on, hold on, chat, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Shorts, flannel, glasses. We match, we're good to go. We're ready for this. Is this our trusty scooter? Damn, so much for my trusty old bike. Who's your good boy? I haven't seen one of your kind here in ages. This is really pretty. This is really pretty. This is really pretty. This is really pretty. And your decision that you make decides what Cyrodiil does. <gasps> I like that game a lot. I actually enjoyed it a lot. This was a really like, this was a happy accident game to play. The stream is done, as is day one of Ludo Narocon. I am on my phone, I was too lazy to take my camera off. I'm eating dinner, I forgot to eat before stream. Good morning everyone. Day two of Ludo Narocon. It's bright. It's early. Yeah, I've been up since about 7.30, 8 a.m. today. I just had my like tech rehearsal call. It's super funny though, we're calling. It's like 8 a.m. for me. I wanna say like 11 p.m. for her. Like there's just a weird time difference where I was like, I will see you later today. And she like, she just goes, you mean tomorrow? And I go, I mean, yeah, yeah I guess it's tomorrow for you. My next plan for the day is I have forgotten to write my poems for my daily poetry challenge. So I need to write poems for the last two days. C come with me while we go do laundry for the next two hours before I have my next tech run call. home, had our tech run, we're good to go. I'm using my phone again because the camera is plugged in. I literally just wrapped up the call with them. We've got audio levels balanced, we've got our art and our layout for stream all set up. Galaxy the cat. Hi Galaxy. Now, for, I'm gonna spend the rest of my day hanging out in my Discord server, watching panels and writing poetry. I gotta catch up on my poetry. There are a bunch of sales going on right now on Steam. Not even just games a part of the festival, but just indie games. And I'm really resisting the urge <laughs> to go check out the sales and maybe buy some more games. Cause it's like, I don't need more. I literally just bought like four or five on my Nintendo Switch for the indie world sale that just happened on the eShop. I just, oh, I'm a sucker for a sale galaxy. What do I do? What do I do? What do I, what do I do? Boop. So I totally messed up my schedule. I didn't realize I had a third tech run with some developers today. It's all good, it's all sorted. We had our tech run and this one was super important too because there's two developers on screen at the same time calling from different locations. So I had to rearrange my whole layout. So now I'm just chilling and I'm watching Good Stories Must Die panel, which is really interesting. It's all about like narratives that like are open-ended and allow the player to control the, where the narrative goes and the pros and cons of how you build those kind of games. It's really cool. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Happy Saturday night and Sunday morning. Everyone's here today for our first devs and demos of the weekend, Luna Naracon, everybody. Today, we're playing the demo for Wayward Strand. We play as Casey Vomaris as she visits an airborne hospital for the first time. One of the really cool things to mention, this game, it takes place on a timer. Each day is a timer and new things happen every day. And the really cool thing about the new things that happen every day is that they never happen twice. My name's Ashna, nice to meet ya. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go solve a mystery about a goat. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, this is cool. So we can experience this conversation either as eavesdroppers or as a guest inside the room. 
This is sick. Everyone, okay. this this is Goldie Bartlett. She is an artist from Melbourne, Australia, the art director at Ghost Pattern, the studio making Wayward Strand. She also contributes to the studio's biz dev and marketing stuff. Before and during the development of Wayward Strand, Goldie has worked on other Melbourne-made games, including Florence, the game that we played on stream last week, and has created support art for a number of projects, including Untitled Goose Game. That was really cool to learn that you worked on that game, too. She is also the visual art director for the Free Play Independent Games Festival and tutors students in game design at RMIT University. She has a love of merging video games with existing media like comics, cartoons, tunes and graphic novels and for encouraging artists from all walks of life to begin making games everyone say hello day two of ludo Naracon has come and gone today was a really fun day it was a pretty chill day i think my favorite panel we watched was the one called crafting game narratives for change i was really excited to watch that one originally because one of the speakers on it is one of my favorite streamers on twitch her name's cheritomo highly recommend you check her out I'm super cool human being cheritomo is a narrative game designer herself and i just always really love hanging out in her streams she just has that mutual passion for storytelling that i have as an actor and as a writer my favorite video games are ones that are rich in story and narrative that explore complex issues they talked about something really interesting on the panel today they were questioning and wondering why video games as a medium maybe aren't always taken seriously when exploring more mature or more political or more contemporary real world issues and concepts. Carr actually brought up that oftentimes games are viewed as, as a resource for fun, for escapism, and it just got me thinking myself about like the kind of games that I really enjoy playing, what draws me to video games when I play them. It's funny, I've been thinking about it a lot lately, what kind of media I enjoy consuming. I don't think media for escapism is for me. I have so many friends that when they sit down and they play a game, or they watch a movie, or they watch a television show, they're sitting down to just have some escapism for a while, to unwind, to relax. They don't want to think too much. They want to enjoy something that helps them escape all the stresses of reality and the real world. I can never sit down and do that kind of thing. I find that in moments when I need escapism, I'm drawn to music and I'm drawn to the outdoors. Like the moments I really need to relax and unwind, I just walk for hours or I'll go for a run or I'll just sit by a river or in a park and I'll just read or I'll write and I'll listen to music and I'll listen to podcasts. Anytime I'm watching movies or television shows or playing video games, if I'm not consuming something that isn't filled with themes that make me think and ponder and question and wonder, I don't know. I don't enjoy myself as much. Like I can, I can enjoy myself for a while, don't get me wrong. I love a good Sunday afternoon with the friends playing a game of Valorant, but I'm never drawn to it if I don't have that social interaction because I'd much rather be watching some cool television show exploring the concept of time travel or playing a video game that explores the deep interconnections of the one's own self-identity with their mental health. I enjoy myself when I do those things and I think it's because as an artist and as a creator and as a storyteller I'm constantly looking for ways to explore the things that make up what my life is, how I view life, how I feel about life, and being able to consume art that comments on all that, that explores all of that, that questions all of that, there's something really comforting about it, and there's something that makes me feel like I'm taking a step forward with all that too. It's, I don't know, that just, it just got me thinking today. Their, their panel today got me thinking. I really enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying the games that we're playing at Ludonericon so far. Tomorrow is, a bit of a fuller day. I, I've fallen three days behind on my poems. So anyone who's watching this that was keeping up with my poems and wondering where the hell I disappeared to for a few days, my bad. <laughs> I'm gonna spend the rest of my evening watching some TV, relaxing, unwinding, and getting some rest before we jump into our third, our third day of Ludonericon. Day three of Ludonericon. It is Sunday the like 25th or something? Yeah, Sunday the 25th. I'm up bright and early this morning. I got my breakfast, I got, got my tea. In about five, 10 minutes, we're gonna be playing the demo for A Space for the Unbound. And I'm excited about this one. I've had A Space for the Unbound like on my radar and on my Steam wish list for a few months now. I'm kind of excited. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to some, good evening to others, and good day to all. 
Folks, today we are playing space from a space for the unbound, a slice of life adventure game rich in narrative, exploring mental health, set in the late 90s of rural Indonesia, exploring a relationship between a boy and a girl and the superpowers that may ensue from Mojiken Studios and Toge Productions. Mojiken Studios is the developer, Toge Productions is the publisher, and I think this is the first time on a devs and demo stream we've had a representative from the publishing company join us for an interview okay so we can't leave this area i really love this pixel art this is really nice and then we have dive that was sick it's weird to there's so many cats the hell was i just dreaming about it was all a dream what? Folks, this is Sarah. Sarah is the community manager at Toge Productions, a game development and publishing studio from Indonesia. Sarah loves cozy and wholesome games. She has eight cats and a dog, and she loves to draw in her free time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The interview went really well. It was awesome meeting Sarah. I've got a couple hours now before my next interview, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna chill on my couch and, and eat potato chips and clean the bathroom, because it's Sunday and I was supposed to do my chores yesterday, but I was so busy that I'm doing it today instead. Welcome, I feel like we've been here before. That felt so weird, starting the stream again after knowing I've already done that today. We're playing Venice. 2089 from Safe Space Studio. Grams has a man bun. He's wearing flannel. He has a mug with on it and he's reading the newspaper from a hologram projected from his watch. And he's wearing Vans. <laughs> Gramps is a goddamn hipster. The name is Lady. Bad Lady. Is this the coin you were looking for? <gasps> oh my god, yes! The map, the world looks so much different. Do you want to buy one snowball? It costs five bitcoins. Yes, please. Folks, please welcome these two groovy individuals. On our left here, well, my left on the on the stream, we have Matteo Brantagani, producer and technical director at Safe Play Studio. He also works as a tutor for math and physics. He loves using Excel tables and is a bit of a music nerd. Welcome, welcome. And on the right, we have Giacomo Kekin, narrative designer and community manager at Safe Play Studio, which means that he gets to work with words most of his time. In his free time, he is a discoverer of new, uninteresting things and a moderator for a couple of content creators. One. Yeah. And two. Mm -hmm. And three. And three. And, right. and four. See, that one was fun because we all went the same direction every single time. Streams today went really well. They were a lot of fun. I played a space for the Unbound this morning, met an amazing individual, Sarah, the community manager, I believe I mentioned this all earlier. Had a lot of fun with the game. I'm so excited for it to come out. Oh, there's just the plot is so, it's rich. It's thick, it's sci-fi fantasy, everything I love. And then this afternoon I played Venice 2089 and its demo was so fun. It's like a really meaty demo, like an hour and a half worth of content. And I sat down with two of the developers, Giacomo and Matteo afterwards, and these dudes were chill. They were so cool. I had a really fun time hanging out and just chatting with them, making jokes. The entire dev team from that studio showed up in the chat and were just making jokes and memes the whole time. It was, it was a good vibe. Today was really good vibes. I wrapped up my third day of Ludonericon with a tech rehearsal, our final devs and demo stream tomorrow. Now I'm gonna go make myself some pasta and then I've been watching Shadow of Bones with my partner. We started watching like yesterday and it was really cool. If y'all haven't seen it, Shadow of Bones, I think it just came out on Netflix. Super high fantasy. It's an adaptation of a trilogy. I think it's a young adult trilogy that came out uh, back in 2013. Really, really good. After two episodes, I'm just like, I need more. I need more. It's like, it's good. Oh, also just an update. For everyone who's wondering where my escape roll poems are, <laughs> they're not in here. They're not even in here. They're who knows where. I've missed like four days. I feel so bad. I was doing so well daily for up to 21 days and then it just <sniffs> daily disappeared. Daily disappeared. I've got some emails to send so I'll get those done after I'm done eating dinner. And hopefully later this evening we'll watch Shadow and Bones episode three and maybe four. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how much we watch tonight. <laughs>
day four, Lunaricon. It's the final day of the convention. I've spent my morning just kind of relaxing and chilling. Streaming every day this weekend has been a lot more, I don't wanna say draining, but it's taken up a lot more energy than I thought. So just been relaxing this morning and then at 1 p.m. I've put together a wheel filled with all the demos that I didn't get a chance to play this weekend and we're gonna spin it on stream and check out a few different demos. And then after that is my final interview. It definitely isn't the same experience as like a conventional convention, going to the convention center, hanging out with your friends, dressing in cosplay, going to booths, buying art and comic books and paraphernalia you don't really need, but you really, really want. It's not the same, but it was still fun. I miss conventions, man. I miss going places with friends. Hello, hello. We're gonna be streaming right now by spinning Jordy's Wheel of Demos. The first demo we're playing is... Later Daters. Oh. Oh, hi, Albert. Meet our new neighbor, please. Albert's got a bird. What game are we gonna play? What game are we gonna play? Exo Colonist. Welcome to the short beta demo of I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist. I'm so bad at this. Bro. And now, the final game of our Ludo Maricon. We'll be checking out Beacon Pines from Hiding Spot Games. Ooh, we're jumping right into the thunder. <laughs> Roll is a little thick. Rolo seems like a bit of a himbo. The change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? <laughs> Bro! <laughs> is that a body? Is that a body? Hello? Ro Rolo, is that you? Over? Why is that so cute and quirky? Um, that game was sick. This is Matt Meyer. Matt does the development, design, music, animation, and half of the writing for Beacon Pine. He always wanted to write music for games, so he decided what better way than to make his own. His first significant game, F you might have to help me, Ephemerid. Thank you. Ephemerid won the 2015 IGF Award for Excellence in Audio, and he's been writing music for his games ever since. Matt, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining me. And that brings us to the end of Ludo Naricon. I had a lot of fun checking out all these different demos and games and meeting these different developers. All the different games I checked out, the panels I watched, was all an amazing way to spend my weekend. I met some really amazing people this weekend. The Fletch Fam community on Twitch grew and the people who are mainstays. It was nice hanging out with them online all weekend long. One of my favorite parts from this weekend was just spending time voicing all these different characters in games. For myself as an actor, it was a fun little exercise to like play a game and try to voice every single character we met because especially in narrative games, there's so much dialogue and interaction and storytelling built on just characters being characters and getting to know one another. And my favorite was when you played a game that just had fully flushed out, wacky, fun, characters. I had a lot of fun playing these games and messing with all these different voices. I am definitely wiped out. I need to go eat dinner. I am starving. I'm probably gonna sit in bed after I send some emails and watch 16 and sleep for like a million 20 years. That was like five or six streams on Twitch plus the ones we did in the Discord server this weekend. I'm a little pooped. I had a really great time but I definitely need to rest. If you want to see any of the VODs from the streams this past weekend, it should be available for about a month after being available on Twitch. I'm hoping actually to get some of those interviews themselves edited, highlighted, and uploaded here on YouTube for you to check out sometime in hopefully the near future. And then also all the games that I checked out this weekend and featured, I will be linking in the description down below. You can find their Steam pages where you can support these developers, support these indie games, and check out some games that I just loved and thought were really fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me during this unconventional convention vlog. I enjoyed taking you along on my days and just chilling with you. I hope you have a great rest of your day whatever time and day it may be for you. Stay safe, stay well. Talk to you soon, friends. Bye.